Hey everybody, welcome into the Orange Zone Instant Recap from the Syracuse 35-31 win over Wake Forest. Regular season finale, this team is bowling and we're freezing. Welcome in, <laughs> Tommy Sladak, Ashley Winskowski. It is Saturday night. It is so cold. We thought we would be doing this inside the dome, but the switch over for the basketball court means yeah. we're out here and, and we're underprepared. We got to address it right off the bat, This right? is not an appropriate code for this situation in November in Syracuse. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, we're cold, but we're doing this, and it's a big reason why, because this team found a way to win when I think some people were dismissing this as just a season over. Six and six finish. They're going bowling. Again, 35 to 31, the final score. Getting through the big story, we got to start with Garrett Trader. This is a guy that Nunzio Campanelli, the interim coach, said after the game, we didn't know how he was going to perform until he's like, Till like 207, basically when he took the field. And not only did he get out there and play again and be a part of this run heavy offense, but he passed and he passed pretty darn well. Pretty darn well. About the best we've seen him throw in maybe since September in those first four wins of the season. I would agree with that. And Big time. threw for 173 yards in the air, three touchdowns, added on another one on the ground. Really, what more can you ask for from a guy who's been battling injury? We're, we're not sure it's an undisclosed injury, but seems to be something that affects his throwing abilities for the last couple months. And I mean, it really just, you could tell it meant a lot to him to go out this way on his senior day. Big time. And he did say after the game at the podium, something along the lines of, you know, there were people in my ear talking about his future, right? Because he's someone that wants to continue playing the game and he had a decision to make. And ultimately, he kind of took that risk, it seemed. It was a risk. I mean, it sure paid off here for a win tonight. It'll be interesting to see if he does play in that bowl game that we'll see later next month. But but yeah, he said I had a lot of voices in my ear. I had a lot of people telling me conflicting things of what to do today. But he really put this team on his back and he found them their sixth win. Big time. So Schrader, 10 for 15, 173 yards. Three touchdowns, one interception. This one was tipped. Other set lines that stick out. It's been it's been the three-headed monster, as I call them. LaQuinn Allen, 32 carries, 144 yards. And then Dan Valari, four catches for 126 yards, two touchdowns. And, oh, yeah, he passed one to Damian Alford, a, an absolute floater. The bomb, the dime downfield, and those three were just working. And we really talked about how they were able to beat, I think, Pitt because – of what they had going with the three of them. And Schrader's return and honestly his ability to throw pretty darn well, I think really just Wake had a tough time answering it. But also credit to their offense because this Syracuse defense looked shaky at points. Shaky at points, obviously that interception late in the fourth quarter, huge to keep this Big to keep time. this Jason as a Simmons, win. Man. Jason Simmons Jr., I mean that was that was I was nervous there. Mm -hmm. It was about four minutes to go before that interception. Big time. And you know, Kevon Dart and a few other guys really getting in there in the fourth quarter making big plays after they were really quiet there to start that game. So they came up big when it mattered most. And the SU offense, credit to that O-line. Um, Bubba Wright, just a, a bunch of those guys where the setup of that run-heavy offense, they play a big role. And they were able to get it done. And it was very encouraging to see from a unit that has stayed largely healthy after a few of those dudes went down there in the beginning. So after the game, you know, we heard from a bunch of the guys and, and some people watching right now might be curious about the coaching change, right? Dino Babers fired. They're playing without their coach. And of course, the coaching carousel of who's coming in happening. We talked about a story earlier this week where Dan Mullen met with a Syracuse, Syracuse athletic director, John Wildack, according to a source. And ultimately those questions were asked to the players and as expected, very dismissive of it, focus on the bowl game. They were. The post-game press conference with the players was very emotional, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely a positive tone. You know, Dan Villari, LaQuint Allen, really just happy to be able to put this team on their back, like you mentioned, the last couple of weeks and, and get this team to a bowl game. But, I mean, they didn't shy away from the fact that, yeah, it's been a tough week. You know what I mean? It's right. been five days since – five, six days – since their longtime head coach, eight years Dino Baber spent here. And many of these guys played for Babers for four, five seasons. Guys like Marlo Wax, I mean, that was all he knew. And so, yeah, the captains, you know, they said that they've had meetings this week. Mm. It's been tough to kind of uh, look past it and and move on, but but they said that they did this for Coach Babers. You know, Nunzio Campanelli didn't shy away from in the postgame saying that everybody in the room knew that this program wouldn't be where they are right now without Dino Babers. Sure. 
But at the end of the day, this school made a decision, and it was to move on even with a team that could get to a bowl game. John Wildek put it out there. He wanted 7-5 and five to be the benchmark. They did not reach that, but they are bowling. They are bowling. I will say the interception before I forget, the stop on that two-point conversion. Yes. With Wake was yes. turned out to be massive because they would have probably hit the field goal. Yes. And had an opportunity to take this thing to OT if Syracuse didn't score on that last drive, which I think they probably would have based on how things went. But as for this bowl game, we'll be finding out in the next week. Um, we'll probably be finding out in the next week who this next head coach is going to be. So I'm thinking it's a it's a string of bowl game possibilities. Pinstripe Bowl, I would be shocked if they end up back shocked. there since they were there just midseason. They were their last bowl game. Fenway Bowl, I think, is probably going to go to Boston College. Pinstripe Bowl, maybe. Something in me says that's a more of like a Duke territory, but could end up in Annapolis. And I think the more likely one right now is that Birmingham Bowl, where it's kind of a, a triple affiliate, so to speak, of the conferences. Could see ACC taking on a team from the from the American or whatnot. But uh, my brain cells are gone. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you called, freezing. <laughs> you called uh, Military Bowl. You mentioned Annapolis. You what said Pinstripe twice. Pinstripe? I think okay. the three that we've uh -huh. seen most frequently so far here uh, with the Syracuse Bowl projection, really the Military Bowl, military. the Birmingham military. Bowl, like you mentioned. Yeah. And I've seen a couple of people float out, maybe the Gasparilla Bowl in Tampa, but we'll mm. see. I would love that. Based I mean, on the way I'm feeling right Tampa. now. <laughs> All right, we're rooting, for <laughs> we're rooting for Tampa. Hopefully that comes true. We will have uh, new episodes coming to you this week uh, with the Orange Zone. We'll have James Mungro on. We'll also be getting into some hoops talk now that that team's going to be back from Maui, the SU men, the SU women out in Vegas. So, um, yeah, that's it for us. Thanks for chatting with us on this freezing post-game recap. We're going to be better prepared, and hopefully it's in Tampa. Hopefully it's in Tampa. <laughs> See you later. Like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate it. Let us know what you thought on the game.